our in-house analyst and economist, as well as a public affairs uh, analyst, Dr. Aliu Elias in the studio, who is a regular, and he will be joining us to share his thoughts on us uh, on some of these concerns uh, surrounding the hike in interest rates, as well as the unemployment rate that is currently on a steady rise in the country. Hello and good morning, Doctor. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for always finding the time to come on the program. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Well, it, you, it appears that um, Nigerians often wake up with uh, one story or the other in the news concerning how uh, the inflation rate is rising or the interest rate is on a steady rise or how an unemployment is, is you know, ravaging parts of the country. Is there any day that Nigerians would wake up and you know, there will be some sort of economic good news in the country. Uh, hopefully, maybe in the next 20, 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what do you make of, of, of the new uh, development with uh, the recent CBN's uh, hike in interest rate, about 27.25%, which many experts believe would sort of cripple the economy some more, especially the private sector uh, businesses? Honestly, it's actually defy logic and uh, we find it difficult to even comprehend as uh, economists because uh, having seen the way the economy is going and instead of us to tarry, uh, to hold on to uh, MP MPR, we still see an increase of 50 basis points and it's quite surprised. And coincidentally, the NBS also brought out their own and said we are having higher the unemployment is getting higher. The more and you could see, it's just two things that are responsible for each other because once interest rate is high that simply means msm will be out of business uh manufacturing sector will not be able to go to banks to borrow loan and because of that there will not be production and when there's no production there will not be employment and when there's no employment you will have low gdp so now it's clear that what the policy decision of uh, cbn is actually crippling the economy because you are trying to sacrifice growth because you want to bring down inflation and for me i think that is not uh, uh, correct they have to review it if not it to continue because you recall that since uh, this uh, present uh, cbn governor became governor up yes. to now he has been increasing the mpr up to date and for what he's actually doing he said he want to bring down inflation and you see inflation actually come, came down but the factor that bring inflation was the increment in, pro in, uh, in farm produce yes. and which is quite temporary and marginal so I, I think someone need to talk to him maybe mr president and, and i think uh, the coordinator of the economy himself uh, the vice president uh, i think they should also talk to him because the more he do this the more he discourage businesses and for business to be out to come back is always difficult because when you're out of business to go to bank to borrow it's quite not uh, encouraging anymore. Now, now, now the National uh, National Bureau of Statistics uh, released the report that as of 2023, about 4 million Nigerians uh, were unemployed. I don't think there's there's been any figure for this year yet, but with the look of things, it's certainly going to be a higher figure. In, in a country like Nigeria, where, you know, people sort of, are now looking towards self-employment. Everybody is now a CEO. Everybody is now a business owner. SMEs are, are, you know, in vogue now. Why do we have four million people out of jobs? Even as I read last year, I think it is underreported because I can't say four million in Nigeria is unemployed. That is underreported because you recall that they rejig and change the basis of calculation. Yes. You know, they said there's a new one by ILO and they are adjusting, but. Unemployment certainly will be there, like those factors I mentioned, because when you don't have companies, you know, employing people, unemployment will become much more. Then you made mention of the uh, CEO, people becoming uh, the boss of their own. The fact is that the enabling environment is not even there. Yes. If it's there, it's not bad to be on your own. I think it's a good thing. And that's why we said, I, I read somewhere in the paper today that uh, the Nigeria University Commission is reviewing our curriculum. So what does that simply mean? That simply means they have recognized that even what we study in school does not encourage us to be self-employed. Because if you study, uh, maybe first, my first degree, I study economics. So for me to be professional, I have to go for master's, you know. But if I study computer economics, you know, when I'm graduating, I can go to uh, 
computer and no extrapolate you know no evaluate and do because some because review you, you have you have better knowledge knowledge better how to regress so, exactly so if you don't want to go for a master's i can start friends. i start work immediately yeah. for instance somebody who also study physics you can't compare somebody who study physics electronics because if you study physics electronics even phone you can sit down and start you know solving our problem immediately so we need to configure our curriculum that will make sure that after we graduate we can get job but for me unemployment will continue to happen perhaps let's talk about underemployment that's another factors like especially in this uh, economy yes. most people are doing work that cannot that they are the money they are collecting and salary cannot take them home you know simply because of the economy so that is there and we still have a so i think it's under underreported i i, I truly believe that uh, the issue of underemployment is one that maybe has been relegated to the background most people just focus on oh these people are employed these people are unemployed but how about the ones that are underemployed the ones that are underpaid we saw the issue of the um, 70,000 naira minimum wage which the federal government mandated would cut across you know the, the public and private sector as well but we all know that there are some people who aren't still meeting up to that 70,000 naira minimum wage not because they don't want to but because of the crippling economic hardship right. that is affecting their businesses right let's even take it to the federal government that said they want to increase to 70,000 even though they've not started uh, paying how many can they employ at most if you calculate the federal staff state staff and local government staff you may not have up to 15 million and we have about 150 120 million employee employment uh, uh, category that simply means that this, the uh, private sector will need to employ them more. Then how many private sector can even afford that 70,000? So it, a man who employed three persons, you know, we call it MSM he, do you expect him to pay that much at this economy? It's quite difficult. So people are very, very underemployed. They want to just manage. Let's even look at it from FCT. How many secondary school are paying the teacher above 70,000? You know, when you look at it from that perspective, you know, see that most people that are getting employed in most private sector are underemployed and they can the money cannot take them home yeah. but there is no employment that they will say okay let me choose this for this and that's why most people are resolving to you know to self-help people even prefer to be a uh, lesson teacher compared to be school teacher yes. do you see the difference because by the time they are school teacher maybe their salary is seventy thousand. but if you're a lesson teacher you can do one two three you know homes and get up to hundred thousand so people are actually underemployed certainly well, well let's uh, take a look at the interest rates now more in-depthly somebody watching now who probably doesn't have the in-depth knowledge of economics like you do will be wondering what impact will this i mean this is like the fifth consecutive time uh the cbn is hiking the interest rate what impact does it have on businesses especially smes like we were talking about smes with just three five uh staff how will it affect them at the verge of a potential tax revenue hike by the federal government right so a good example is i go to bank i borrow 100 naira and i'm to pay 30 naira on that 100 naira so before i will pay my rent before i will service my uh, equipment you know before i will even pay staff you know how can i pay back that 30. that means you have erode the profit i'm going to so if the profit margin should be 10 naira and you are paying debt of what of 30 naira you know it's it's quite you know it doesn't add up for you mm -hmm. so as a businessman who want to borrow 30 million naira you be calculating how much am I going to pay back? What's the payment back period and what's the interest? So, and that's why if you go to advanced economy, you know they want to encourage you and reduce the, the level of interest rate so that you can come to do business, employ people. You know, government also get more taxes. Yes. Government also, you know, in the long run also get increased GDP yes. that will be production and in the long run that will be employment because that's the major problem now. If you increase uh, uh tax i mean interest like you do now you have just discouraged many i can tell you many companies have fold up you know and there is no hope of coming back because coming back simply means you have to get more money to do business as big as dangote he cried out if you recall the other time the level of interest rate is very high yes. for a large scale uh enterprise you know, right, multinational in such, in such company in such a manner. So let alone MSME that only need 500,000 to do 
to do businesses yeah. it becomes a serious issue and it's quite discouraging and that's why we said perhaps there should be a special window you know for the manufacturing sector in some area and said okay you manufacturing sector come and borrow at 15 percent interest rate this will encourage people and that, how many industries do you have here recall that we still have energy crisis problem so i'll go to bank borrow and i'll still come and buy fuel or gas i'm sure you know how much gas is now Certainly. so it's quite discouraging so and that's why we said we want energy security and and, and an increasing electricity tariff that i can tell you i'm an M M msme owner at least i have some people under my kids in terms of employment i can tell you i'm bothered as i am on how i'm going to buy fuel I'm going to pay for my band A, electricity. I'm going to pay salary. You know, it's quite discouraging sometimes. You now think, what are you actually doing in the business? Because in the long run, you may be running at at lost. But you wouldn't want to say you want to go and uh, dust your certificate to go and look for employment. Except, you know, maybe a special one. So, I mean, it's quite I mean, I mean you're, if challenging. you're looking for unemployment, you're probably going under another SME. Who is also grappling with the same, well, the same problem? problem will you even be able to employ me? Exactly. You know, and that's another thing we have in Nigeria because we will size you up. Can I actually pay this salary? Yes. Uh, for me, maybe my own principle uh, for employment, I'll look for somebody who, you know, I can really, really can be under my control, if I thought maybe knowledgeable than me, but I will look at how I can, that person can be in my control. So it's a serious issue for small business owners. I can tell it's quite challenging. And if it continues like this, Nigeria might be going to the, I mean, hitting the, you know, the rock. It's not easy for people to actually survive. So you that you say, okay, you're a small business person, you're not benefiting from government directly, Tax will be there for you. Bank A will be there for you. Energy, energy cost will be there for you. And you have also have interest prob, interest rate problem. It's quite a, a, cha a challenging period. So I think President Bola, I mentioned, we need to review this. If they actually want Nigeria to breathe in terms of doing business in now, Nigeria. There was a report this morning in the news that, um, you know, the Central Bank of Nigeria blaming or asking Nigerians to blame and hold former president Muhammad Buhari accountable for the current economic hardship in the country. Uh, it's not new in Nigeria that any successive government or administration comes into power and, you know, it's a blame game of this person was here, he did so much, he wrecked so much havoc to the system, and now I have to fix the system, that's why I can't do what I need to do. Uh, why do we continue in this vicious circle of blame games? Right, I beg to disagree with that uh, uh insinuation because it's quite erroneous and you are misleading nigeria if you are bringing up such a thing first and foremost during president uh muhammad i'm not conversing for him you know everybody with his own tenure during this problem we are during this period we did not see interest rate as high as this high as during this period we did not see energy cost as this. i mean inflation was high but it wasn't as high as this as this perhaps i can tell you the bane of our problem is the policy pronouncement or policy direction of President uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the day he became president, he said stress subsidy is gone. And you know, when you say stress subsidy is gone, we are looking at the other challenges that surround it that you have to solve. It becomes a serious one. I can tell you since about two months, I've been struggling to convert my car to CNG. To CNG. You, you, you mentioned it here. I'm still on time. it. Now, <laughs> I've not gotten any cop simply because I look at that cost. It's quite enormous for us. And what it is all about policy direction. Now, you want to remove a subsidy. And you said uh, the alternative is to convert to uh, CNG, CNG. And CNG is not available. You said you want to remove a subsidy. And our refinery will be working up to now. It is not working. So, it is quite clear that it's self-inflict problem. I wouldn't want them to take it to President Ebola. I mean, President Mohamed. But perhaps, remember this, we are in the same party. Yes. You are in the same party and you've seen the direction of things. So I think it's policy direction problem. Even, go, let's go back to Cardoso. Yes. During the MFL, everybody with his own uh, way of doing things. During during MFL, it was not as worse as this. I mean, Cardoso was also in the system at the time, a huge a huge uh, decision maker in the CBN. Right, so it's a serious uh, problem. So for me, I think it, this is, they should take the past administration. Perhaps, if you are even blaming him after one year, it should be you have done your own budget. You have you should have just make sure you plan yourself and use your budget to control uh, things. You you control the capital budget and what have you. So I think it, it's a big uh, bad way of saying that you should blame uh, President Muhammad Buhari. I think they should face the reality and solve Nigerian problem. Well, well, Dr. Aliu, in terms of the current joblessness in the country with the exit of uh, multinational companies and the closure of manufacturing companies uh, within the country. Uh, 
uh, what what the, and mostly the people who were employed in these companies you would agree with me that the demography is mostly young people and now they are left unemployed wallowing and wasting away at home are we seeing an adverse effect especially on how our security st system or structure in the country would likely be compromised by this jobless uh, uh, joblessness that is ravaging especially the younger generation it is a, it, it has a correlation when there is unemployment when there is joblessness when the category of youth and i do and <laughs> it's devil's workshop it's a common saying so it's like that but you know let's look at gsk company called gsk that is a pharmaceutical, yes, a pharmaceutical company. company do you know they left this country because of this uh policy somersault now inhaler that's been sold at 2000 is now 10200 look at the gap in fact one of the things that has uh, that this policy has actually affected again yeah. is that pharmaceutical area do you know a common drugs that we used to purchase at 100 naira is now 400 and it's a function and of policy uh, direction so for me joblessness will continue unless we want to do more in terms of creating an enabling environment for in-house business because that's what you even call a uh, import substitution just like what Dangote did now you know it's called import substitution yes. we cannot import to an extent again in terms of where so i think government is supposed to look at that direction since all these multinationals are going empower local industry avail them some fund give them a special window to access fund let them take over you know you know or we call it backward integration anyone you want to call it make sure that anything that is going out we have a better alternative in nigeria we wouldn't say they shouldn't go because you know they are not nigerians you know people like dangote people like uh ted dollar people like you know they will still remain one way or the other perhaps there is also repatriation you know so these are the things so I, I i think we need to review our policy direction in this administration to encourage people to do uh to do business. But, but it's quite surprising as well because uh, we know uh Tinubu to be a shrewd businessman as well yes. who invested in nigeria in, in fact i dove my cap for him a, a seasoned banker as well he invested in and is an oil uh you know you know expert to guru in that area to become treasurer in such a so i, I expect him to understand the dynamics in the economy and how to encourage people to actually come invest in nigeria but the the president of the senate uh, senator uh, got to look for uh quite some time now has been vocal about the hardship uh, in the country and uh, we saw in the news on the daily independent newspaper and i'll read it out and i'll come back to you to get your reaction to this uh let's uh, pick up the daily independent together as i read out the headline again as earlier seen uh, on the front page of the Daily Independent, you'd find Nigerians grappling with realities of soaring living costs, says Akwabio, says challenges testing every fabric of our society. It's quite interesting. Th this is the number number three person in the country whom, you know, most people, especially people at the grassroots, might think that, oh, because he's at the top there, he might not be able to relate to, you know, the sufferings of nigerians but he's out here telling the president that nigerians are suffering and it's they are being tested and pushed to the brink of 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 you know uh, break right you know actually he represented some people yes. as a senator before he became senator uh, president he must have seen the hands even in within his constituency yes. and i'm happy that this is actually coming from him because uh, i i must tell you this is quite surprising as it's coming from him that that should have showed that they have seen the reality of the economic uh, uh challenge on nigeria as uh, citizen it's quite brightening you know if you see uh, some graphics we saw in lagos where we are trekking people cannot afford to pay you know and we saw a lot of taxi drivers who have decided that no when it is also period that there's no uh, rush i will pack my my car I mean, because even here in abuja so, we, i i i for one i i witnessed um, a scenario where a taxi driver picked people up about two people in his boots because i think they couldn't afford to pay to sit inside i the saw car. one yesterday was more surprising the person was tied by the boots Along, the, alongside, along, some, alongside goods. some goods i was so, so it's, it's uh, quite is, worrying is that is that what we have no, we is, have is get, that what we have become is that honestly, the level that the country i can has tell you is is the, rea is the reality people that live in some uh maybe sides of abuja you could see them uh, they would jump onto a pickup and 30 people have to be be there because I mean, of the it's, transportation it's a, it's a usual site along the 
um, Maraba, Axis. No, it's maybe because people. you are familiar with that. Yeah. It's the same thing with <laughs> other other side as well. Yes. We have been saying it, and it's quite uh, it's quite worrying. I can also tell you, most offices now now schedule how people come to work. You know, say you come Monday, Tuesday because of transport. You take over Wednesday, Thursday. I can also tell you that most plazas in Abuja now people sleep. You know, because you cannot be living far and be coming. So, from you to go home every day, you must make about 5,000 naira as profit. Yes. So, if you don't make 5,000 as profit, you rather sleep high because you won't be able to afford it. So, imagine if you are coming from Guagualada to city center in Amak and you are going to expend 5,000 naira, not your own car, you know, joining public buses. Yes. So, it's, it's quite challenge and that's how it is in everywhere so i think there must be urgent attention to to ease the tra problem of transportation and that's why we say we should have cng like a brick and mortar whereby every person can assess for me for two months i've been struggling i've gone there i've not seen messages you've not told me to do anything but imagine if it's like a Maybe a kilometer from you, you can access it yes. at everywhere. Just the way you can access petrol at Exactly. Or perhaps let's have CNG conversion at every filling station. Do you yeah. know how easy it would have been? So I think this government needs to do more to make sure they create more uh, or unbundle um, that area where you will not be the only supplier of the because part of the what they, they said where I went to convert that I was made to know that government has not supplied them the, the material. Yes. So imagine if average person can go to India, I think they are patronized India more now, to assess that. You know, it becomes very easy. And the day I went there to the guy that was converting, because I have to go to the factory, he said, he's the only one converting, and he would take himself um, two weeks to convert seven cars. And I said, that means I don't even have hope of being called. Two weeks to convert seven, seven cars. cars. That, let's even celebrate him because I saw him, you know, walking. You know, of work. it's not easy. I think we need to train more people in that. But, area but do, do you think that maybe, uh, just maybe, the whole issue of CNG is being uh, stemmed down or suppressed so as not to disrupt the oil and gas industry that is already booming and enriching the pockets of the elite in Nigeria? Well, you know, you know, let's be honest. You know, you know, we can have a theory that will say that once you are in business yes. and you think uh, your competition is bringing something that will kill your business, you also find a way to discourage that business. It's, it happens because that's why but business is not the situation in this case. Well, I, I wouldn't say so because government is in charge now, you know, and expect government to do more. You know, when we say government is in except those government people in charge have compromised the processes yes. because it is their own responsibility to bring abundance you know, uh, CNG uh, materials. So actually cushion the... We are, we are, we are gas country. And it, we, according to government, it's always, uh, you know, uh, flare away. But I, it sometimes it's becoming surprising because we look at cooking gas now. Do you know how much it is now also? So we have energy crisis in Nigeria. And any country that does not have energy security is also is at the brink of having economic uh, problem. Now, now, Dr. Aliu, you keep mentioning that the federal government or the government at all levels, need they need to act actively take actions or take measures that will ensure that the sufferings of Nigerians are elevated and, you know, people can live decent lives. Uh, kudos to uh, Governor Adeleke of Oshun State who has reduced now, in the news, it says that Adeleke reduces work, work days for ocean workers, extends palliative payments. Even, even though it appears as if this is a short-term remedy uh, to a long-term problem, it, it, it's also as if he's the only person who is in touch with the reality of what is happening with people in Nigeria. I think Lagos State uh, Governor started it, and for me, it is a serious contradiction. Why so? Yes. Because how can you say people should reduce their work uh, period because of CNG, because of the cost of transport? Why not solve the major problem? Because if you say people should reduce their working it reduces period, productivity. It reduces product productivity and GDP automatically. So you are saying that the, com the drivers who usually pick them, should not, they should not be available for the driver to, to pick them. You're also saying that what they, the bill or the file they're supposed to pass in their office should delay for more two, three days. That's what it simply means. So it's a serious contradiction. So, so in, a, in as much as he, he's doing this to help elevate their sufferings, He's also crippling the economy. He's crippling directly. the economy, and it's have much more negative. That's why I say it's, it's going to be counter. 
productive. Yes. Because you are saying that don't come to work because of your uh, because transportation is expensive. Do you know the uh, how do I call it the ripple effect of that on the economy on the person is supposed to deal with? You are also making him not to be productive. So it's a, it's counterproductive for me. I think it's not a good uh, solution to an Nigerian problem. Uh, all right, Dr. Aliu. Now let's uh, move on to other issues in the news where the federal government has revealed that it may spend well over 236 billion naira monthly on imported as well as Dangote petrol following uh, the saga surrounding the fuel subsidy. Now, the oil and gas industry in Nigeria has been rocked by a lot of internal crisis and a lot of Nigerians are looking towards the end of this problem, this rift that continues to bedevil the system. How would you react to this uh, particular uh, development, the statement by the federal government on how much it might, ex it might expend monthly on imported and uh, Dangote petrol? Right. Well, I'm not bothered about how much they will be expending uh, in terms of uh, making Nigerian to feel better. But the thing is, let's have affordability and availability. You know, it's not about how much you spend because, you know, this is federal government yes. and they are taking the lead and they are taking it from government coffer because it's their own problem. You know why? If our refinery is working, yes. We wouldn't have issues at all at all because our refinery would have cushioned the. If I can tell you that our forest problem, it's rest, uh, the, the import, importation of fuel take forty percent of our forest problem. Imagine it's being killed. Yes, we wouldn't have issues on forex and we wouldn't have this level of uh, inflation. You know, because yes. look at dollar now is about one thousand six hundred and seventy and seventy naira. So if we can ne nearing two thousand, if you can kill that forex, you know, issues yes. by forty percent, you know, it will be like seven hundred, eight hundred, and that's what we should focus on. And that's why I said I don't understand why our refinery cannot work. Tinubu promised us, National Assembly promised us, you know, even NNPC promised us, they even promised N NLC, we've not seen it work. So I'm not bothered about how much they want to spend because I don't want to even look at the figure, but I want it to be available because beyond the how uh, PMS is expensive, it's still not readily available Benable, in yes. Nigeria. It's a serious problem. Well, well Dan Kote has also called for uh, a removal of fuel subsidy in right. the news. Uh, many Nigerians will be wondering, is there another removal of fuel subsidy apart from the one declared by uh, the president on the day he was sworn in into office? Right. You know, they have it. They have different name for it. They call it shortfall. They call it under recovery. But yes. uh, for a layman, it is fuel subsidy. Well, how would you describe <laughs> it as an expert? Right. I think uh, Dangote himself, you look at Dangote himself, you know, when he said fake and then this is going to determine how much he will sell. It simply shows that he wants to sell to Nigeria at global price. Yes. So global price maybe as a dent to so one thousand one hundred seventeen, whereby if government now buy it from him, you know it will be reduced by federal government. But buying from Dangote for me, I think it's still better than importing, because by importing you are bringing much forex uh, problem into the country. Right. By importing you are also the, the, I mean deny employment opportunity by importing you are also denying us balance of trade and balance of uh, uh balance of trade and balance of payment so for me if if i should uh, uh, that that would say they should remove they should remove a subsidy if there is availability so let me give you an example yeah. if uh, a refinery is working let's say among the four let's say two maybe one in Portacot, one in uh, in worry is working and dangote is also producing do you know what happens when there is demand and supply when there is what what we call competition yes. what will happen there will be you know when there is supply demand will be less you know, we will have abundance. Our tank farm will be filled up with what? With fuel. What will happen? There will be reduction in, uh, in the price. Perhaps government can use their own, which is the government own, because you get crude from yourself and you are producing by yourself. You can say, okay, our own product is going to be sell at 700. Then going to be say, okay, my own is 750. It's now left to the marketers to choose which one they want to actually go for. And that's where we need competition. But as it were now, we don't have... A Nigerian refinery working. So Dangote is a liberty. Perhaps he's a businessman. He wants to sell more. I can tell you globally, Nigeria is still the best uh, market uh, for Dangote. I watched on the dailies one day. They said uh, the president of Botswana is calling Dangote to come and invest in. Uh, you know, I was not thinking. I using this to spike Nigeria or to, or to do what? Because 
Botswana population is not more than two million, <laughs> which is not up oh, to so, so the smallest why, state. Why do they think we'll need to why, why do they we need to for, no for we to even bother about that? It's not up to <laughs> Bayesa, which is, should be the smallest states in, in Nigeria. So that could also know that Nigeria is the best market and the highest, you know, that it, where you can actually get so for me, for you to say remove first subsidy, for me. We want you to remove first subsidy, but do the normal things. You know, make sure that it, there's availability and there's affordability. Then we can remove first subsidy. Nigeria don't say don't increase marginally, but don't increase beyond our capacity. Well, well, doctor, uh, let's uh, move on away from this. We have just about uh, six minutes to wrap up this conversation, and right. there's something else I want you to touch on. Excuse me. Now, this is uh, the issue of the army discharging a female soldier who accused an officer of sexual exploitation, advances and exploitation uh, in his office. Uh, yesterday, we saw a statement, a press conference by the army spokesperson who refuted these claims and said that the female soldier had been discharged since July and that it wasn't uh, only of recent, but from social media reports and the video that came out, the video was quite recent. Right. You know, when we see Nigeria Army, honestly, I must tell you, I have serious respect for their process in terms of investigation because yes. the two people involved are their own. Yes. But the thing is, you know, you know, you know that my fear, which uh, I don't want to sound, uh, maybe I'm quite supportive of uh, the man involved. You know, the issue of blackmailing is becoming rampant. Yes. And we have to be careful about it. I, I think I said to a particular case where somebody raised an issue. And by the time I get my fine, I discover that there is a case of blackmailing. Which is a big issue. But according to Nigeria, I mean, they said the woman has been discharged. She has access to her pension. They didn't deny her anything. But she, they allege. She has all her entitlements as a retired. But they allege. Yeah. I mean, probably she has mental or you know they try to under health, under uh, health. circumstances exactly so i think well, i want to respect their processes but i, I don't want them to, i want want i don't want them to be covering one person for the for the other but it's quite a very big issue to 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 handle it has to be with the gender sensitive uh, uh, issue so but i hope they will follow up what they said and they will give her all her entitlement and that will be uh may certainly to an extent now, now in, the, in the military across the world not just in nigeria the issue of sexual exploitation especially uh, towards women has been a very huge topic uh, even though big it's always discussed in harsh tones nobody wants to offend anybody nobody wants to step on toes uh, how much of a deep and big issue is this and how can we curtail it and ensure that women in the force, women in the military, are safe. Right. Sexual harassment generally is real. <laughs> it's it happens virtually everywhere yeah. eh, because where where it happens now, that's why we are looking at it. So I think there should be a, a more protocol from maybe from the Nigeria Army to actually protect their their female uh, beyond the you know uh, for all this uh, sexual harassment. Yes. You know when man become the head. Sometimes it find way of actually, you know, so we won't rule it out, but it has to be thoroughly investigated. And that's why I said I wouldn't want a case where one person wants to blackmail the other, one person wants to take advantage of the other uh, person. So I want to, because I listened to the PRO of uh, Nigeria, I mean, while he was uh, actually ruling out their resolution and their uh, decisions, but I think let's leave it as, as it is now, if they can cater to all the women's. Uh, the woman's need. Many people are concerned uh, over the silence of the Ministry of Women Affairs, uh, citing that somehow they should have spoken up right. for the female soldier. Right. And they are also against the citation of mental disorder or mental challenge that the army made on the female soldier, as well as the exoneration of the uh, of the officer that was accused. Honestly, you recall that uh, the madam for uh, Minister of Women Affairs, she's very vibrant and she's not known to be silent on issues. Maybe she's, she's privy to some uh, information uh, as well. Perhaps it's not too late. She can still come out to say something, but I knew that she wouldn't want to take that for granted. All right. Well, in closing now, uh, uh, Dr. Aliu, let me just uh, get your take, your message to the Nigerian army, your message to women in all uh, sectors across Nigeria in terms of staying safe and ensuring that uh, they fight against such exploitations if any should come up. Right. We I want to trust the Nigerian army process in terms of doing their investi 
investigation we want them to uphold that because you know if consecutively we discover that they are fall short of our expectation yes. we will be much more discouraged uh, uh, going forward and for for women i think uh, it's quite uh, it's a challenging time for them because you know you know they are fighting for is it gender, gender equality, equality where yeah. some of us will say no we want equity because if you want equality it might be far far uh for you to read but if you can have equity whereby women are considered and respected to an extent and once they raise any uh, red flag it will be considered and investigated i think that would have solved the problem all right dr leo i must thank you for always coming around it's uh, always interesting to have conversations with you on the program thank you for having me thank you so much okay.